Hi friends, so um, in the series of impacts of the transportation systems, now we will look into the impact through noise of the transportation activities. That is also one big part of uh, you know impacts of the traffic and uh, activities of the transportation. So, these are the contents for today's uh, this lecture. Uh, we will see what is noise, everybody knows, but still we will see how noise is defined and then what are the harmful or negative impacts or effects of the noise and what are different standards uh, which we measure that uh, this noise is acceptable and this much is not acceptable and then what are different factors which affect the traffic noise or vehicular noise okay? and how do we measure them or uh, then what are the ways to mitigate or reduce the noise uh, like barriers etcetera we will see. And a few numerical problems have also been incorporated, I think you will find them interesting to, uh, hand, to do hands on practice to measure uh, the noise related parameters. Well, any unwanted sound is uh, noise as it is said, but uh, you know uh, in old days uh, there was an ad on TV one anecdote I would like to share with you that they used to have this kind of advertisement that uh, owners pride and neighbors uh, envy uh, something like that. So, uh, noise also is like that sometimes you know a particular kind of uh, frequency and particular kind of wavelengths of the sound uh, some people enjoy they call it music and for others it may be irritating thing or noise. So, that way noise definition is also little bit different, but of course, uh, in terms of energy means if beyond a level of uh, you know some pitch or something which is harmful for our eardrums, then whether it is music lover or other that will influence our total uh, system of hearing and uh, uh, feeling. So, there may be effects in terms of uh, subjective and behavioral effects also interpersonal behavior and physiological impacts may be or effects may be there which damages our certain parts of the body or which create some sort of diseases or illness. For example, we may not be able to sleep uh, you know if there is a lot of noise and when you are not sleeping properly your whole system becomes uh, of very low efficiency. Okay. <coughs> so, the subjective effects are uh, like some sort of annoyance, some sort of disturbances but it, de it depends on, on the person to person. So, as I wrote here music versus noise means uh, there are certain kind of music like rocks and lot of uh, you know drumming and those kind of things are there and people enjoy it, but for other people it may be kind of very chaotic situation they do not like it they call it it is not music, but a noise. So, from person to person it uh, depends how do you feel that particular sound note whether it is rhythmic or whether it is completely out of uh, beat and uh, it, it is for your liking or not all those things are subjective. But then behavioral also like uh, uh, you know we get irritated and uh, if there is a lot of noise in the background we have to shout to communicate our things. So, lot of interference is there in the speech. Also like sleeping pattern our sleeping behavior can be disturbed by lot of noise around us. So, that is why you know nowadays people have a good windows which have these uh, uh, you know insulation effects those kind of glasses people use and uh, it is otherwise difficult to perform our task. For example, we are studying or we are doing some other work and uh, irritating noise is there. So, we cannot focus on that. So, that is very negative impact. So, we do not need the disturbances caused by the noise. Of course, uh, physio physiological effects may be there because it can induce or cause the headache or some other uh, problems heartbeats or uh, you know blood pressure etcetera may be uh, uh, induced by these kind of environment where lot of noise is there. So, in nutshell you can uh, list them like uh, it can interfere with the speeches because when we are uh, talking to someone then we are not hearing or we are not able to communicate properly and emotional and behavioral stress may be there. A person might feel uh, disturbed and stressed up 
due to you know annoying sounds and uh, oh, you, you might be finding that person very polite, but on a particular day you will find that he is not so in happy mood, he is a little bit annoyed. So, maybe he is coming from some annoying atmosphere where his uh, mental state has been affected. So, that way means even permanent hearing loss may be there if you are exposed to very high level of noise continuously. So, our drums may be damaged uh, and uh, it may be difficult to you know regain that uh, kind of a stage where you can hear properly all, all sorts of those noise or sound uh, related uh, and that spectrum which we are naturally able to listen to or hear. So, there may be problems for like patients etcetera who are uh, in the need of rest and if there is a noise they cannot rest okay? and then they can also damage our uh, liver or heart or brain depending upon what is our health condition and how much noise level we are exposed to. Well, if we compare the standards, we in India have very good uh, you know standards in comparison to other for example, one is federal highway administration of USA this one and then other one is American association of state highway and transportation officials. They also have certain standards almost it is same basically, but in India we have better standards means we allow only the lower uh, level, but unfortunately as uh, you know people say that we are very good in having laws regulations, but implementation is not so good. So, that is why even at the nights when those hours where noise is not permitted even by the courts uh, orders, but people you know our uh, behavior is such that uh, we sometimes do not care. So, that is not good thing, but uh, this is part of our life and we have to really learn to respect our laws and we should not increase the background noise or in the environment which is beyond the permissible limits. Okay, here are some levels which you can relate with different activities. For example, uh, you know truck or motorcycle when it is uh, going through and making a particular sound level that is known as very loud, it is around 90 uh, decibels. Okay. So, that is the new unit of the noise and the light traffic uh, will cause only moderate quiet room it is very means calm and that is very very nice. So, different kind of activities are linked with different levels of sound or noise. Then if you want to understand about in, in terms of what are the factors which cause the noise. So, the traffic related factors may be there okay. and uh, this means we are talking about traffic noise. So, traffic noise also has different factors uh, traffic related. Uh, then human related factors, then road factors, surface etcetera we will see and then vehicle the condition of the vehicle or type of the vehicle those are also the factors. So, these four factors will contribute to the traffic noise. So, if you want to see like uh, traffic factors, so we can further classify them in terms of like traffic volume if lot of traffic is there and some people are honking or some even uh, you know. Uh, other noise levels may multiply or it can add into higher level of noise. Similarly, traffic speed related noise means higher speed uh, because of certain parts or uh, you know window vibrations etcetera, passengers may feel lot of noise. Then vehicle composition also can uh, contribute to different types of noises and uh, also like heavy vehicles presence or uh, you know there are congestion. So, again a lot of uh, honking and disturbances and also it can add to the background noise. So, if already background noise is there then the traffic uh, related factors will add into it and the noise level will increase. Okay, so, these are some facts uh, related to traffic factors for example, uh, you know motor vehicles are noisier than passenger cars. Okay, diesel engines are more noisier than petrol engines, although lot of research has gone and even diesel engines nowadays are quite uh, you know very calm nowadays, but still means petrol engine and diesel engines working is different and diesel engine makes more noise or more sound. Okay. Similarly, commercial trucks loaded vehicles, heavy vehicles etcetera they will make lot of noise, there will be very high friction between you know road and the tires. 
So, that contribute to the noise. Similarly, age of the vehicles, when parts are loose, you know vibrations are more. So, again the noise level may increase. If we talk about the road factors, then again condition of the road, its type of you know pavement and the shoulders, surface roughness, okay, all these will add into the noise or sound levels. What kind of grade it is and uh, if there are portholes, then there will be jumping and uh, brakes and all those kind of screeches, they will add to the noise or sound levels. Then <coughs> if there are intersections, so uh, lot of change in the speed and gear, all these activities may contribute to the noise. How much width of the road is there, so that will decide congestion happens or not. And then there are other uh, you know parts like noise barriers, if there are noise barriers, then maybe uh, the people on the other side, they may uh, not face lot of noise because barriers will um, reduce the noise level. We will see how it is reduced by barrier levels. Then there are vehicle factors, so engine type as we have seen, vehicle age or type of fuel, maintenance of the vehicle, type of horns, some people have very loud horns, you know. So, it is quite very high pitch and high uh, sound uh, and it is very irritating sometimes, you know, when you are thinking and uh, walking on the road and some vehicle comes and they push on of very loud uh, level, you feel completely shocked what happens, what has happened. Then human factors like, um, you know, driving habits, some people apply brakes very frequently or they have habit of honking, although in uh, the uh, like European countries or you go developed countries like Germany, Japan, etc., the traffic is calm, they are, uh, you know, passengers behavior is totally different and honking is not allowed and it is assumed as very bad behavior. But here, you know, our behavior is quite different and we are habitual of honking and all those things. So, they contribute to the noise and experience of the driver means, if driver is very experienced, he knows when to uh, apply brake, when to not, when to change the gear, etc. So, the noise level can be reduced accordingly. Okay, human factors again like uh, uh, because of, uh, you know, these uh, uh, different kind of uh, behavior um, or irresponsible and inappropriate behavior, they can contribute into accidents. So, the human factor is very, very important because if you are not in a healthy mental framework and if you are not driving properly, then it can cause accidents, it can harm yourself, it can harm other people. So, the 90 percent of accidents are linked to human error, okay, means of course, there are contributing factors of uh, other things like uh, potholes and the bad road or uh, some poor signage, etc. But still, the human alertness may prevent all those things. So, human error is the predominant factor into causing traffic accidents, etc. And the noise is one of the um, important factor to change the human behavior, because if somebody is not calm and cool, irritated by uh, high noise uh, level, so uh, his responses and reflections will not be proper and they, that may result into some accidents. And if you see these, you know, traffic vehicles on the road, how these noise is uh, generated. So, uh, you can see this uh, uh, drive, drive shaft which is rotating and then the gear system, transmission of the energy and the friction with the road of the uh, these uh, tires etcetera and the type of the uh, road tires uh, interaction, they all contribute to uh, the sound level. Similarly, like aerodynamics uh, noise because when air is uh, uh, striking or hitting the body and that body also uh, then uh, release some sort of noise. So, the propulsion systems and uh, the wheel and rail interaction like in case of car or in case of uh, these road uh, vehicles, the interaction of wheel and road is there. So, that uh, cause noise. Similarly, in trains, the wheel and rail, they also cause, they also produce some sort of noise. In air traffic also again engines and then these uh, landing gears, all lot of noise is produced because of jet engines, it is very high noisy environment outside. Um, 
and that's why you know sometimes near air, air, airports or air, aerodromes uh, the property rates are not so high some people don't want to live there okay because of this noise and they don't find it as a healthy condition to live so all these things you know sometimes increase or decrease the uh, property prices depending upon what kind of facilities we are having around us well then how to measure the noise because when we want to reduce the noise then we should measure it first and compare with the standards so there are instruments the like sound level meters they can you know measure uh, the noise and there are different units of the noise measurement we will see uh, in uh, earlier uh, in later slides then uh, you know these kind of uh, acoustic arrays are used for uh, capturing the noise in and around of a particular site location so these kind of uh, several uh, you know sensors can be used for catching the sound a wide range of spectrum of the sound as you know decibel is the unit and then if you want to uh, you know convert and the sound pressure level the sound pressure level so you you can uh, this spl can be measured or denoted by lp and lp can be represented by the ratio of the this um, uh, square sound pressure and reference sound pressure so root mean square of the sound pressure uh, of uh, different uh, ranges and then the reference sound pressure means a reference sound pressure is also there like here this 20 micro pascal so that ratio will decide how much uh, this spl value is there then we also convert it into some other units like leq equivalent continuous noise level because noise fluctuates from one level to another like wind direction fluctuates or wind velocity fluctuates similarly this noise is also one energy and this energy fluctuates from low to high middle something like that so to con like sum of them average them out not arithmetically very simply average that is logarithmic and uh, then sum them up as a equivalent noise means like uh, fluctuating noise is there for uh, let us say one hour and if you measure a leq means if that level of noise is for one hour then the same energy is there so this is bas basically the representation of the equivalence of the energy level and here it is very uh, nicely represented like uh, <coughs> you know it is these kind of noise levels are fluctuating and we if uh, you calculate this leq so this much of uh, you know energy is equivalent to that energy which is being given by fluctuation of the uh, sound and you can see some examples like uh, you can uh, try them at leisure so very simple numerical problems are there for energy average means you convert the sound level into energy and then back energy to the sound level then you can get what is uh, you know this decibels how much decibels are there because of contribution of from one source to another similarly a weighting is very important because beyond a limit we do not hear and those kind of uh, you know cut off uh, sound levels are removed and a weighting is done uh, so this dba is also one way of uh, representing the sound pressure levels from our human ear response uh, viewpoint because between this only we hear 500 hertz to 8 uh, hertz then n percent exceeded, uh, exceeded level like ln means this much percent uh, is exceeding that particular level is exceeding so many times or so many percentage for example this much is uh, l10 means only 10 percent time this much of noise will be available uh, in that particular measurement uh, series so this is known as the l10 because the sound level exceeded for 10 percent of the time only so rest of the time the sound or noise has pressure level at or below that l10 so this is l10 similarly l50 means 50 percent of the time this is exceeding okay so l90 is 90 percent of time so basically that is you can say background noise because all the time that uh, you know this much of level will be present so l90 is less than l50 and l10 is highest one okay when we want to talk about mitigating uh, you know noise pollution then we also uh, should uh, learn about different materials or different infrastructures which adds into reducing the noise like green plantation that is good for the environment as well as they also absorb the 
noise or they reduce the noise ok. Then regular servicing uh, uh, of the automobiles because uh, if you are not man maintaining it properly then some loosened parts will create the noise and engine or braking system etcetera. Green buildings uh, having suitable absorbing material uh, for the noise on the walls and windows they, they are also in nowadays and wearables equipments like if you are uh, working in a very noisy environment then better you apply some ear plugs otherwise you will be exposed to high level of noise and it will harm your uh, you know physiological uh, balances. Also we should apply lubrication and regular servicing of our uh, you know vehicles or machinery and some policy regulations uh, which are uh, like loud speakers. So, if there is a you know law that beyond 10 pm we should not use the loud speakers then we should use that policy and we should follow that law. If we are not following then we are basically adding to the noise level to other people also. And soundproof materials can be used uh, you know like as I said there are new windows uh, which have very good material which absorbs lot of sound and they do not allow to you know sound enter into the indoor environment. And land use planning is also important because you should not plan any noisy activity nearer to like schools or hospitals I means sensitive uh, communities they should be uh, cap off switch off uh, these kind of noisy activities and there must be proper signage so that people become alert and they, they, they should not use any honking kind of horns etc. Well, this is like uh, one barrier means barrier how to use the barrier for example, this is the barrier here and uh, as noise is going to this side. So, uh, it loses its energy because of uh, you know barrier height and in next slide you will see that we increase the height of the barrier from uh, this much to uh, 4 times then how uh, this energy level reduces because of uh, different heights. So, very low energy remains after certain distance. So, barriers contribute lot of in reducing uh, the noise and uh, there, there, there is particular exercise of designing barriers uh, depending upon the traffic noise level and traffic activity or frequency those kind of things. So, average height of the you know barriers is 2 to 5, but minimum generally 1 to 2.5 and maximum is 4 to 10 meter depending upon as like means it is on the highway expressway or simple roads etcetera you can see. And if there is a hospitals then you need to have a very good barrier and uh, there must be some signage that people uh, should not uh, horn there ok. So, if you can increase the distance between the source of the sound and the receptor. So, uh, even naturally uh, when the sound energy is travelling to it, it gets dissipated and it will reach in a very low uh, uh, you know value or low uh, energy at, at the. So, means if it directly goes without barrier then for example, uh, this much is the distance. But if you are having this barrier then this will travel like this. So, the total distance increases and the sound dissipation occurs more. Similarly, the material also uh, has important role. For example, these uh, you know hedges etcetera they are porous and they are not able to reduce noise so effectively. And uh, these kind of uh, you know good quality acoustic fencing may be better rather than these simple hedges. Similarly, uh, you know uh, these timber fencing uh, is good, but if there are gaps then again uh, because these render green screens they look nice, but uh, they are not uh, good in uh, protecting yourself from noise ok. Similarly, because of gaps these hit and miss fencing is not so good, but if you have like visual uh, you know uh, kind of some. Uh, screen of the glass or some acrylic or there are so many material now nowadays they can even uh, you know do not uh, stop this beauty or the of the surrounding area. So, aesthetic value is also there and also you can reduce the sound levels. Well, concrete structures may be good uh, in low maintenance kind of, but uh, they are expensive when we are constructing and uh, I means it is difficult to afterwards when if you want to change the location then it is it is very uh, difficult. 
okay some kind of you know lightweight metal fencing can also be there which can be used depending upon the seriousness of the site but as because of due gaps these kind of uh, you know structures are as are not good and but uh, you know if there are kind of uh, very high bending kind and slopes so again the distance will increase so the very less noise will go to that side where uh, people may be walking or cycling etc similarly again this uh, wall if thickness is good and uh, that's a good solid wall with aggregate etc that will prevent you from the noise but uh, these kind of screening with gaps will not help as we have seen uh, similarly these these kind of structures are suitable and these slated fencing are not suitable so again that uh, effect as i uh, you know these reflectors these barriers also uh, reflect the sound so lot of sound goes away and only remaining one goes uh, to the receptor so this is again uh, we are showing to you well noise barriers losses are there uh, two types like transmission losses because of distance etc it loses sound loses the energy and the um, this insertion losses which are depending upon you know the initial sound and the sound which is uh, reaching there so that uh, uh, because of barrier presence that lot of uh, difference is there which is not known as the insertion losses so these losses sum up and we get the net uh, result of low sound again uh, how to calculate these in insertion losses so a very simple uh, empirical formulation is there which you can use and you can practice at leisure uh, it's very interesting uh, to see that like 12 feet tall noise barrier is there installed uh, 12 feet from the vehicle okay so this is the barrier 12 feet high 12 feet away from the vehicle 15 feet from the house so how much you know energy losses will be there and there is like a window of 4 uh, feet height so all these parameters you can use to calculate the total uh, path length and then how much energy losses will be there so this is kind of your homework and uh, at last we conclude that these loud and uh, regular exposure of loud noise to uh, people working people they can reduce your efficiency they can make uh, negative changes in the physiology they can irritate us they can change our behavior and they can damage our health also so we should uh, not allow noise levels very high in our surrounding and these noise emissions uh, you know uh, should be kept minimum as well as uh, from the planning stage itself we should uh, be proactive in terms of using certain materials which reduces the noise and maybe we can use some structures and barriers we can design them according to the need of the that location and uh, we can uh, make the surrounding uh, much noise free or calm and uh, you know good good location where you can enjoy your other activities so references are there for again to have additional knowledge about different uh, numerical problems or uh, design parameters and all those things if you want to know more about so again thank you so this is all uh, for impacts of the transportation sector on the environment human beings and other activities now uh, we will uh, you know see uh, like environmental impact assessment because impact is there so we should assess it otherwise how would we plan to reduce the impact so there are techno i mean techniques which are used for environmental impact assessment of different activities and the tra transportation sector is one of the important activities which also influence the environment so we should know the eia or env environmental impact assessment techniques and procedures so in next lecture we will see that thank you again for your kind attention and see you again